Good morning, K3. Today is Wacky Wednesday. No, there will be no laughing. Don't you laugh. Don't you giggle. School is not fun. Just because it's Wacky Wednesday! Let's get ready, everybody! Good morning song, here we go! Good morning, everyone! Here we Are you go, ready everybody. for a brand new day? Yeah. Happy Wacky Good Wednesday morning. morning. Good morning. How, How are you? How are you? It's so nice to have, have you here with me today. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Just fine. Howdy, howdy, howdy do. Hello, good day. Now that we're together, learning so much fun, the more of us, the better. So come on, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Just fine. Howdy, howdy, you do. Hello, good day. Good morning, Sophia, Samaja, Katie, and Tyson. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Elias. Good morning, Phoenix and Jalen. Good morning, Benjamin. Good morning. Walter, Natalie, Noah. Good morning. Marvin, Trey, and Lily. Good morning. Good morning. Chloe, Jules. Good morning. Simon and Heidi. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Ricks. Good morning, morning, everybody else. Good morning. How are you? How are you? It's so nice to have you here with me today. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Just fine. Howdy, how do you do? Hello, good day. Now that we're together, learning so much fun, the more of us, the better. So come on, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Just fine. Howdy, how do you do? Hello, good day. Howdy, howdy, do hello, good day. Awesome sauce, rock and roll, K3, let's get right into it. We're not wasting any time. Let's do our letter sounds, here we go. Haven't done this one in a while. Yeah, Mr. B, take it away, my friend. Every day, tell me what sound looks fake. Get up and dance in your crazy, wacky outfit. Yoga 
popcorn words. Here we go, little popcorn words. Pop, action. Pop, 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 popcorn words. Pop, 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 popcorn words. Pop, pop up when you read in newspapers, books, and magazines. Pop, pop up yeah, when right you read there, in right newspapers, to our popcorn books, and words. magazines. And go, little play was. And she go at he play is to me have to our book said here. Days, days of the week. Thursday, we talk song. 
Three tilts and all. Three tilts and all. Months of the year, I'll get us all situated. Over. January, February, March, and April, May, and June, and July, August, September, October, November, December. Mr. Stan style, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A ten and one, ten and two, ten and three, ten and four, ten and five, ten and six, ten and seven, uh, ten and eight, ten and nine, ten and ten, ten and ten and one. Huh. Ten and ten and two. Wait a second. Ten and ten and two. What? What's twenty-two? Yeah, let's go back to our pattern. We we'll start our pattern from right here from thirteen. 
sphere, sphere, cube, cone. Sphere, sphere, cube, cone. Sphere, sphere. You're right, it's a sphere. I wanted to, to, to get over this because I like 22. I like this number. There's a two in the tens place and there's a two in the ones place. So what would that look like if we were to show it on uh, counting cubes, right? Well, here it is. I have it for us. We'd have one group of 10. We'd have two groups of 10. That's 10, 20. That's going to go in our tens place right here. That's this two in the tens place. Now, how many ones do we have? We have two ones. So here are two ones. And now we have 22. 10, 20, 21, 22. This is how we would show 22. Two sets of 10, two sets of two. Love it, love it, want some more of it. K3, stand up, it's Wacky Wednesday. And you know my favorite food is pizza, it's Wacky Wednesday, all I'm gonna eat today is pizza. I'm just, that, that's just the way it's gonna go. Pizza for breakfast, pizza for lunch, pizza for dinner, and pizza for dessert. Pizza every day. Let's go! Pizza! Two wackiest guys I know. That sounds pretty real. I used to eat tacos every single day. But then I had a pizza slice and it blew me away. And I'm all I eat is pizza. Na, 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 All I eat is pizza. Na, 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 I got cheese on my fingers. I got cheese on my fingers. K3. 
just kind of get down to it. I want everybody to get a book, get ready for read to self. We're going to get started right away. We're going to stay in one spot. We're going to read the whole time and we're going to clean up quickly and quietly. Remember, you don't have to stand right here in front of your computer. You don't have to be in front of, uh, you don't have to be in front of, uh, you know, your iPad. You can find a comfy place to go to. That's not a problem. All right. Find your spot where you won't stop reading where it's quiet where you can concentrate where you can find those words sound out those words you know um let's get ready let's get started to work hard here we go eight minutes on the clock see if we can do more than eight minutes that'd be great eight minutes tick tock on the clock, there we go.
Nice, day three. How many of you got started right away? How many of you stayed in one spot? How many of you read the whole time? Great work, everybody. Great work. Love it, love it, love it. Want some more of it. Here we go. We are going to move on to our next activity. I'm going to set you up in a minute. Welcome back, A3. Here we go. Let's get started. We just got done with a little read to self. Love it, love it, love it. We'll move right on. Let's see what my friend Mr. B is doing these days. That's my email. Interesting. No, that's funny. All right. Chrome. What, Mr. Chrome? What is going on? There we go. Take the letters and bring them up. Look at sound and prove for the show. What's Our focus this week of blends. Let's learn some blends. Look at sound and prove for the show. What's up? Take the letters and bring them up. Look at sound and prove for the show. What's up? See which is the change. Chicken, chicken, B R is the break, break. S H is the shake, sh shake, shake, shake. C L is the clean, clap, 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 clap. Take the letters and bring them up. Make the sound and move with the show. What's up? Take the letters and bring them up. Make the sounds move with the show. What's up? S K is the skate, skate. S K is the skate, skate. D R is the drop, drop, drop. G L is the glide, glide. F L is the fly, fly. S L is the smooth, slide, slide. Take the letters and blend them up. Make the sound and move through the show. What's up? Take the letters and blend them up. Make the sound and move through the show. What's up? S T is the stop, stop. S T is the st star, star. S P is spin, spin. S P is spin, spin, spin. Fake, fake. S L is smart, smart. Take the letters and bring them up. Make the sound and move with the show. What's up? Take the letters and bring them up. Make the sound and move with the show. What's up? Hit hey, them up, hit hey, them up, hit them up. Hit hey, up, hit them up, hit hey, them up, hit them up. Hit hey, up, hit them up, hit hey, them up. Hit them up, hit hey, them up, hit hey, them up. Hit them up, hit them up. Hey, take the letters and bring them up. Chicken, chicken. Yeah, bring them up. All right, day three. Break. Great. Yes. Woo, that got squirrely. Something got crazy there. Let's get back to it. Yeah, there we go. All right, everybody. Hope you got some wiggles out. Time for a little listen to reading, and we are going to read our story Kermit the Hermit by none other than Mr. Bill Pete. Let me fix our lighting situation here. There we go. A little less, a little less shine. That looks nice. There we go. All right, K3. This is Kermit the Hermit, written and illustrated by Bill Pete. And we are learning about kindness. So let's think about people who were kind in the story and those who maybe weren't. All right. We're also going to focus on the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Here we go. Kermit the Hermit, written and illustrated by Bill Pete. In Monterey Bay, there's a jumble of rock. 
stacked up like a castle across from the dock. The king of this castle, an old crab called Kermit, lived all by himself in a cave like a hermit. There was never a crab who was one half as selfish or one tenth as mean as this crusty old shellfish. A shellfish is an animal like a crab that has a shell, lives in the ocean. What made Kermit greedy and grumpy that way was the shortage of food everywhere in the bay, for a crab must depend on what he can find, small scraps and tidbits of any old kind. To Kermit each day met a fight for survival with every last seagull and crab as his wives. Unless it is cured, sometimes greediness grows. When it finally stops, alas, nobody knows. And before very long, Kermit grabbed everything from a rusty padlock to a ball of kite string, a broken jackknife, a pair of old shoes, things that a crab couldn't possibly use. And his cave was soon crammed without one inch to spare. There was just enough space left for Kermit in there. Like any old miser, he wanted a lot of something or other. He didn't care what. And he had been greedy the rest of his days if an odd twist of fate hadn't changed Kermit's ways. This remarkable change in old Kermit began with an everyday thing, just a battered tin can. A pork and bean can that had been tossed away far in the sand dunes that bordered the bay. The crumpled tin lid caught, lid caught the sun's bright reflection, which caused it to sparkle in every direction. And since the old miser had never been told, that bright things that glitter are not always gold. He supposed that it must be some valuable thing, so that someone had lost a gold watch or a ring. So he crawled off the rocks and out onto the land. Then over the hill, he brought stretches of sand. And not until Kermit was next to his prize did he realize a trick had been played on his eyes. Why, you phony, tin faker, growled the old grump. Rubble like you should be tossed in a dump. Then just as he turned to start back to the bay, the crab spied a dog who was heading his way. The dog was exploring and trying out smells, sniffing at driftwood and empty clamshell. One sniff at the can told him what had been in it, so he turned to sniff at old Kermit a minute. In one grab, the crab gave the dog a sharp nip on his sensitive nose, and he let out a yip. That'll teach you, he snapped, to go sniffing at me. Then he turned himself round to head back to the sea. But the dog made a leap, seized the crab in his jaws. By the back of the shell, beyond the reach of the claws. Put me down, cried the crab. Put me down, you big brute, or I'll give you another good pinch on your snoot. But the dog paid no heed to old Kermit's command. He set to work digging a hole in the sand. The crab guessed at once it was not just a cave. It was going straight down so it must be a grave. What a horrible end, Kermit said with a groan, to be buried alive like a worthless old bone. Then, just as a dog dropped the crab in the hole, a boy happened by with a long fishing pole. You old hound, he scolded, what a mean thing to do. Now, how would you like it if I buried you? You're too nice a dog to do something like that. Then he scooped up the crab in his tattered straw hat trotted off down the beach to the edge of the sea and flipped his hat off. Flipping his hat, he said, with a sigh of relief, the old crab went his way on back to his castle of rocks in the bay. If it weren't for the boy, he'd just have to admit, there'd be no tomorrow. That would have been it. I'll reward my young friend, said old Kermit. That's what, with all my life's savings, every last thing that I've got, but things like old shoes or a broken jackknife could never repay him for saving my life. The ideal reward would be a new bike. Ideal means perfect. So the perfect reward, the ideal reward would be a new bike. There's something I'm sure that a small boy would like. Yet how can a crab ever buy a bicycle without any money, not even a nickel? He pondered the problem the whole afternoon, then far into the night by the light of the moon. But try as he might, alas and alack, he thought of no way he could pay the boy back. The next afternoon, as he crawled on the rocks, Kermit spotted the boy on the end of the docks, 
the very same boy, the old crab could tell that by the faded striped shirt and the tattered straw hat. He had been lulled to sleep by the warm summer breeze with his fishing pole propped on his patched trouser knees. You see the patches on his trousers, his pants? I might help him catch a big fish, Kermit thought, if there's any big fish around here to be caught. So of course he must first find the boy's baited hook. So he scrambled out into the bay for a look, and just a few yards from the pilings he found it with a school of small minnows all swarming around it. Lightly gripping the line just below the lead weight, Kermit tiptoed along gently, dragging the bait. If he happened to give the least little jerk, the boy would reel in, and his plan would work. So Kermit kept on till he came to the ledge. This is the ledge, kind of like a cliff, where he stopped to beer cough cautiously over the edge. Then reaching as far as he could with his claws, he lowered the bait toward a halibut's jaws. The big fish took a look, and in one mighty scoop, both the worm and the hook disappeared in one loop. <clears throat> when he found he'd been hooked, he took off like a streak. And the line, the fishing line, which was really too flimsy and weak, suddenly snapped by the force of the shock somewhere behind Kermit back near the dock. He was on his own now with no one to help, and off he went flying through tangles of kelp. Up over the ways, he went floppity flip straight out of the bay on a wild, foamy trip. Then somehow, far out in the broad, rolling sea, the furious fish finally fought his way free. Way out in deep water, the crab couldn't crawl. About all he could do was to let himself fall. And Kermit went tumbling down in slow motion in the dark, gloomy depths of the ocean to the soft, sandy floor where he lit with a plunk near the place where an old pirate ship had been sunk. The huge hull, this is the hull, the bottom of the boat's called the hull, had been smashed, all the sails ripped and tattered, and in every direction the cargo was scattered. The cargo are the things that a ship carries. All the barrels and chests are the cargo. I imagine, said Kermit, I'm not safe down here. There's much more to this place than the weird atmosphere. By the cold, creepy feeling that ran through his she the shell, crouched, uh, but some creature was watching. The old crab could tell by the cold, creepy feeling that ran through the shell. Crouching flat in the sand, he peered into the dark. He suddenly saw it. a monstrous blue shark. As a shark wheeled around for a head-on attack, Kermit spied an old chest that was open a crack. He got there just a second before the shark did, and a wild scramble squeezed under the lid. Pushing hard with his snout, the big fish tried his best to force open the lid of the heavy old chest. He lunged with a fury in all his brute strength of his broad fins and tail and his 20-foot length but the lid's double hinges were solid with rust. See, it's all rusty. And a century's thickness of barnacle crust. So the crab stayed within while the shark stayed without. All he got for his pains was a badly bruised snout. And finally, he finally turned tail and went away tearing in search of some school of sardines or some herring. Find an easier snack. Not until he was sure the big shark was long gone did Kermit look down to see what he sat on. The old chest was filled pretty near to the top with heaps of gold pieces that made his eyes pop. What strange, Kermit muttered. No one's found it before. It can't be much more than two miles from shore. But anyway, all this gold treasure's mine now. If I can just haul it back to my castle somehow. With a coin in each claw, he set out for the bay with his life in great danger each step of it. There's some more of the cargo in the ship, and there's the anchor. Not only the shark, but other big fish as well can easily bite through a crab's crusty shell. To avoid being caught by these crab-hungry enemies, he scuttled behind the dense clumps of anemones. Here the deep shadows were mostly blue-green, so a bluish-green crab there could scarcely be seen. Every day for three months, Kermit made the round trip, returning each time with two coins in his grip. To make room for the treasure, he emptied his cave 
of all the rubble, he'd gone to so much trouble to save. Yeah, so he threw out all his rubble, rubble's like trash. After stacking the gold into one gleaming pile, his crusty face cracked in a satisfied smile. I like his smile. He was thinking of all the great pleasure and fun such a treasure would bring to a certain someone. Then he crawled from his cave for a view of the bay in hopes he'd find his young friend there that day. Since the dock was deserted, he looked toward the shore where he spied some small boys, half a dozen or more. Tall ones and scrawny ones, one who was fat, but none of them wore a striped shirt or straw hat. But his young friend might wear something else altogether since winter had come with its cold, foggy weather. But anyway, Kermit thought, what could I do? Just walk up to him and say, here's a present for you. And then he heaved a deep and most sorrowful sigh. <sighs> he attracted a pelican roosting nearby. Now cheer up, old fellow, the big bird began, smiling as only a pelican can. If you've got a problem, please let me suggest. You tell it to me. Get the thing off your chest. No one could resist such a friendly big smile, so the crab told his tale to him after a while, showing all the gold where he came to the end, when he came to the end. Then he tried to describe his heroic young friend. That boy, said the bird, is familiar to me. Some people watch birds. I watch people, you see. The lad, that means a little boy, the lad has two sisters and also one brother, and then I'm quite certain a father and mother. They live in a very small three-room red shack in the south part of town beside, beside the train track. I could carry the treasure there inside my beak, but I'd swallow it all, for my beak has a leak. So, if you would like, I'll just give you a lift. Besides, you're the one to deliver the gift. And so, with two gold pieces tight in his grip, Kermit took off on his first flying trip across the broad bay in one breathtaking swoop away through the dense fog as thick as pea soup. By the time Kermit got up the nerve to look down, the big bird was soaring out over the town. Below was a small cottage, painted barn red, beside the train track, as the pelican said. The poor people who lived there was easy to see, for it was the one house without TV. See all the other houses they have their antennas for their TVs. As the pelican came to a fluttering stop alongside the chimney, he let the coins drop. When they fell to the bottom, the two friends could tell. For the pot bellied stove went kerbong like a bell. Then inside the house, great excitement broke out. Why, it's gold, it's real gold! They heard somebody shout. The family ran out to find what it could be but discovered the fog had rolled in from the sea. A ghostly white curtain closed in everywhere and see the fog up here. So they never caught sight of whoever was there. The high flying crab and the pelican's beak brought the whole family off fortune inside of a week. Soon they had a TV set and all sorts of toys, such as dolls for the daughters and bikes for the boys. All the rest of the gold, which was quite an amount, they sent safely aside in a savings account. For the wise father said, it's not every day that a fortune is dropped down our chimney. That's the end of Hermit the Hermit. Awesome, K3. Uh, I hope you like reading, listening to that book as much as I like reading it. Um, talk for a bit about our three beginning, our middle, and our end. So if we were to go back to the book, in the beginning, let's just take a look here. We're gonna go back here and I'm gonna reverse this. In the beginning of Kermit the Hunter, Kermit was a grouch. He was a grump. He's not nice. He was mean to people. He had to fight for his food, right? He didn't have many friends and he liked to hoard. He hoarded all these things, right? They kept them all to himself. So in the beginning of the story, I would say that Kermit was, he was a grouch, right? He wasn't very friendly. Then in the middle of the story, he got his life saved by the boy, right? The dog was about to bury him and the boy saved his life. And this changes Kermit. After the boy saves his life, he wants to do something nice for someone else. 
So he tries, in the middle of the story, he tries to get, to catch the, have the boy catch a fish. But of course, we know that didn't work out real well, right? Because the fish took him on a long trip and he ended up near the treasure chest. And after he escaped, now toward the end of the story, he brings the treasure back to the boy and the boy whose family was poor now has lots of money. And also Kermit's made a friend, right? And he's done something nice for someone. So that's the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story, all right? What I'd like you to do right now, you've been sitting, sitting, sitting for such a long time. Good job. Let's uh, get up and get some movement out, all right? There we go. Ooh, no way. Do they have this one? Uh, oh my goodness, you guys earned it. Ninja training. Do not ninja your brother, sister, mother, or father. Make sure you get enough space. This is one of the best ones ever. A wacky Wednesday, little Kukuru ninja training. Get up and dance. Hey guys, my name is Brian. I'll be your ninja instructor for today. We're gonna learn all the ninja moves together. Sweet. Okay, so first is the ninja, ninja move. Chop. Here we go. Chop, 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 do you want to be a ninja? ninja? Do you want to train with me? Ninja. And just go higher. You should go higher, 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 higher. It's Brian again. We're going to do the ninja kick four times all together. Make sure you don't hurt your friends. Everybody ready? Here we go. Woo! Nice kicking. Kick. So far, so good, everyone. You look amazing. There's only one final step. We need to learn the ninja yell. It's how ninjas announce their presence. What? Let's do it four times. Do you want to be a ninja? Ninja, ninja do you want to train with me? Ninja. Ninjas go higher. You should go higher, higher. Awesome. Day three. That was great. Let's, uh, yeah. Good. I hope you got some wiggles out today. We are going to be for right to self. We're going to work on identifying in our stories that we're writing, our personal narratives, our small moments, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. And this will be this will be easy because we'll just count those on our fingers. The beginning, the middle, and the end. All right. So let's uh let's take a look at right now. I've got this set up ready to go. Beginning, middle, and end. All right, let's flip it around. There we go. So um, I want to tell you the story that I started yesterday about me and Sophia going fishing, right? Remember I added a detail. 
But I didn't tell the whole story yesterday. I only told the beginning, right? So let me tell you the beginning again. Sophia and I went fishing at the lake one day. It was very hot. There was no wind to cool us off at all. Now I need to tell you the middle. What happened next? The second thing. I did the beginning. We went fishing. It was super hot, right? In the middle, Sophia put her fishing rod and the bait into the water. And this huge fish, boom, snapped it up. Now I'm going to draw that here. The fish bites the hook. And just like happened with um, Kermit the Hermit, the fish is going to start taking off. And then at the end of the story, the third part of the story, beginning, middle, end, I'm going to draw another picture of Sophia actually catching the fish, where she gets the fish inside. We bring it out of the water. And we take a picture with it, and then I throw it back in the water because we didn't want to catch the fish to eat it. We just wanted to practice catching it. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to take a moment and I would like you to talk about the beginning of your story. What happened at the beginning? And hold up one thing. Then tell me what happened in the middle. Then tell me what happened at the end on your three fingers. Do a three finger retail in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, okay? So take a moment and do that right now. Beginning, middle, end. And you can use the same story that you started on yesterday. And now I want you to go and start doing your writing. I would like you to draw me the beginning, the middle, and the end. I'm going to set an eight minute timer for everyone to get working. Get ready, get your papers. If you do it now, it'll be all done. Get your pencil. Tell somebody your beginning, tell somebody your middle, tell somebody your end. I'm going to start right here. And here we go. So I've set my eight minute timer and I'm going to start drawing now too. I'm going to draw, I already drew my beginning. You should have already drawn at least your beginning. So I want you to draw three pictures. We're just sketching. We're getting our ideas down. We're not going to write any words yet. Just sketching. And you can talk to yourself about what's in the middle and what's at the end too.
I'm not using any colors because I'm going to do that later after I do my writing. I'm just doing a sketch right now. So I've kind of got my middle done already. Now I'm going to move on to my ending. In my middle, fish bit hard, and at the end, Sophia caught the fish. <coughs> Just a quick sketch. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'll go back and add my colors and my details later. Right now, I'm just getting my ideas. My beginning, my middle, and my end. Work the whole time. Don't stop working. Get your ideas out with a good sketch. Remember to include your characters, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Go back and work on the middle.
Good. Not much time left. You can always label your picture if you're done. Remember, just do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, everybody. That's the uh, that's the timer right there. Good. So I'm going to go back, and now I'm going to tell you, listen, did I do a beginning, a middle, and an end to my story? And I'm just going to look at the picture. I'm just going to talk about the pictures. I did some writing to the beginning yesterday, and I added some details, but I'm just going to talk about this. So in the beginning, Sophia and I went fishing at the lake. One day, and it was very hot, and there was no wind to cool us off. Remember, I added that detail yesterday because I want to tell you really what it was like. Then, in the middle, okay, my second finger, Sophia caught this huge fish, and the fish started thrashing around. I'm going to have him move in his tail because he's super strong, kind of like that shark in Kermit the Hermit was thrashing around. And she said, I caught a fish. Well, no, she didn't say I caught a fish. She said, I got a bite. I got a bite. And you can feel it. When you get your bite, your fishing pole starts to bend. It's really exciting. And then at the end of the story, she pulled and she pulled and she pulled. And at the end, Sophia got the fish out of the water. Sophia and I took a picture with the fish and then we let it go. My story has a beginning. My story has a middle. And my story has an end. Okay, so I did three different pictures telling you the beginning, the middle, and the end. All right? K3, that is what we are doing today for right to self. So hopefully you talked about your beginning, you talked about your middle, you talked about your end, and you drew a picture for your beginning, you drew a picture for your middle, and you drew a picture for your end. Remember, this picture is just a quick sketch, okay? Awesome. Let's get right into your math homework. And your math homework is just a review, okay? So for math homework, I would like you to all, I'm just gonna tell you your math homework. You've done this all week. You know we are working on subtraction and you are gonna start on page one, 427, okay? I'll do a couple with you for practice. So I'm gonna write my name here, Mr. Travers. Our objective is still subtraction. And you can tell that because, oh, it's like a caterpillar problem. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine caterpillars to start off with. Then I'm gonna draw my subtraction because one, two, three, four caterpillars went away. Nine minus four equals Nine minus four equals five, all right? I'd like you to finish this page and the next page for homework, all right? This is your review, it's your chapter review. Here's a vocabulary. Where is the minus sign? Here, here, or here. We're gonna draw a line from the minus sign to wherever it is. Where's the equal sign? Is this the equal sign? Is this the equal sign? Or is this the equal sign? And then you're gonna draw a line for subtract. Which one is subtract? This says five take away two, all right? Number four is R left, okay? For problem four, there are nine ladybugs on the leaf. Four ladybugs fly away. How many? are left if four ladybugs fly away. All right. 
number five tells you to use objects to figure out this story. There were five spiders on a web. You could just draw circles if you wanted to, right? There were five spiders on the web. Three spiders crawled away. How many are left? And then for this one, you get to start with 10 balls in the cart. And you get to tell me that seven were used in gym class. How many were left? And you can finish this for your homework. There were nine lions. You can see that this many went away. How many lions are left? K3, hope you had a wonderful Wacky Wednesday. Looking forward to seeing all of you at my Zoom meeting, nine o'clock every morning. Check Class Dojo. If you don't know how to get to Zoom, give me a call, all right? I want to see everybody there. It's super important. We have a lot of fun, all right? See you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great day. Goodbye.